Hey guys, remember my Too Fast, Too Furious review when I said that I had a friend that mentioned to me that Tokyo Drift is when these movies kind of start to go downhill? Yeah, he was right. Hey guys, welcome to my review of Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. So, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift follows this kid from the United States who's not Paul Walker, who gets sent to live with his dad over in Japan because he like gets in trouble in the United States for street racing. So he gets sent to live with his dad who lives over in Japan. He works for the Navy. He's like stationed over there. So he goes over there and they send him there to go to school and everything, even though he doesn't know how to speak Japanese, which is kind of weird. And he ends up just doing all the same shit he did back in the United States. And this story is just more street racing. Feels like a lot of rehash from the last Fast and Furious movies. And a lot of the stuff that we did like about the previous two Fast and Furious movies are not in this one. Anyway, while there, the, the kid, like, tries to, like, you know, fit in with the new crowd. You know, he meets a few American kids or kids from other countries that are that are there or whatever. And, you know, he gets involved in street racing again. He's trying to impress this girl who's dating this douchebag who's, like, the nephew of some local mobster or something. It's just... I... <sighs> so let's talk about Lucas Black, who, like, portrays the main character. I have no idea who this guy is. I've never seen him before in any other movie. And he's just not as fun as Paul Walker or any of the other ones. He just, he just isn't. I didn't find him that fun. He just has the same just... He just has that look on his face the entire movie. Just yeah, I just didn't find him that fun compared to Paul Walker or any of the other people from any of the other Fast and Furious movies. Plus, he makes a lot of stupid decisions in this movie. Even by Fast and Furious standards, these are stupid decisions. Nathalie Kelly plays a love interest, and she's pretty basic, just like all the other love interests in any of the other Fast and Furious movies. I mean, she's, she's eye candy, that's it. Not like I'm expecting anything else, though. Sung Kang plays this guy that tries to help the main character fit into the whole, you know, street racing underworld and all that, and... and He's he's okay, I guess. Brian T pretty much plays the exact same villain from the first Fast and Furious movie. There is no difference between them. And I'm not being racist either. I'm just saying, like, they're pretty much, like, just the same character. There's not much of a difference. They're both just a couple of douchebags. You know, I gotta give a credit to, like, you know, the second movie for at least trying to do things a little different by introducing different types of villains and everything. But at the same time, trying to keep it, you know, the same as the first one. This one, as different as it feels, it feels like they did a lot more retread in this movie. Granted, there's no undercover story or anything like that. But it feels like it's just the same thing over again. You know, race to win the girl. You know, it's it feels a lot like just the first movie all over again. Except set in Japan and there's no undercover and there's no heist. But, you know, it's the same thing, you know. Try to get the girl that's, you know, dating the bad guy and everything, and it, really, we'll get to the whole romance part of this movie later, because this is the part that's just, like, so stupid with this movie. But the whole movie, though, this takes itself way too seriously, and that, the part of the enjoyment of the last two movies is that I felt like that the actors playing these characters just felt like... They knew that they were in kind of a stupid movie, but they were having a lot of fun playing these characters. And in turn, you have a lot of fun watching them. Here, I feel like these actors are taking these characters way too seriously. And they just come off as dull. Like, the whole movie is just bland and really dull. And the whole movie feels like it takes itself way too seriously. And in this movie, why the hell does Lucas Black keep going after this Nath Natalie Kelly or Nathalie Kelly, whatever the hell her name is? I mean, Why? He's going over there because to try to avoid going to jail in the United States. He goes over there, gets in the same thing again, keeps going after this one, you know, piece of ass. And no, yeah, she is hot, but he keeps going after her. But she, or like, she's dating a guy that's involved in the mafia over there, or the mob, or whatever the hell they call them. And why? I mean, there's plenty of other hot Asian chicks that he could be banging over there in Japan. Plenty of other poontang he can go get, but he keeps trying to go after her. It's like, after all, it's like, dude, just... No! Like, if I met a girl, I don't care how hot she was, actually, I'd probably take anything I can get. But anyway, 
logically speaking, I would say, like, if I met a girl and she was really hot and she was, like, involved in the mafia or something, I'd give her the one-two double deuce, man. I mean, he's, no. It's really stupid, too, and, like, probably I'd say about a good 75% of the problems in this movie come out of this stupid romance that's going on between these two. Especially her. I mean, she causes a lot of problems. Brian T. goes over and beats the living shit out of Lucas Black over him talking to her, and she goes to, like, visit the guy and say, hey, we're done now, it's over, when he's got a bunch of other women hanging around him. It's like, really? It's like, you... I, it just doesn't make any sense! Yeah, you beat the shit out of this other guy, but and it's over because of that, even though you have a bunch of women hanging around you the whole rest of the movie. It's just... Ugh, it's so stupid! Then to top things off, they go and pussify an old Mustang in the movie by putting a Nissan engine in it or something. It's like... Why the hell would you do that? That's what made American muscle cars great, is that they had, like, a shit ton of horsepower in these engines for no reason, just because they could. And the thing that baffled me the most is that they bring this Mustang with them to do a drifting race. And I know that... Yeah. Let me just say this. Mustangs are not known for their handling. That's why Steve McQueen wrecked like three when they were shooting the movie Bullet when they were doing the car chase. I know they look cool, but that's the last car I'd ever bring to a drifting race. I think I'd feel more safe in my Subaru Outback. For the good things though, I mean, they improved some of the special effects and the music was pretty good in the movie, so I'll give it that. And the cinematography looks, you know, you know, it looks pretty good and, you know, they improved on some other things, but other than that, this movie just doesn't add much. There was a nice Easter egg at the end with uh, Vin Diesel and everything, but this movie just didn't feel like it really added much. I don't know. It's just... It was just kind of meh. It didn't really... I didn't have a lot of fun watching it. I was more just distracted by how stupid this movie is. And that's kind of disappointing because I actually did have a lot of fun watching the first two Fast and Furious movies because of how stupid they were, but you enjoyed them. This one, it's just kind of just... You don't get much enjoyment out of it. And I would have to say that this one is going to have to be a skip. I just hope that they don't get any worse than this, though. And I still got, what, it's three? I still got about, like, uh... <laughs> uh... I got a... Uh, three. I got three left. Three movies. I counted. So anyway, guys, that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. The link is also in the description below. Be sure to be on the lookout for the rest of my Fast and Furious reviews that are going to be coming up. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.